Okay, we're rolling. Mike. All right. Now, today uh, we're interviewing Mr. Ralph Weller at uh, Latham headquarters. It's September 26, 2001. Michael Akey, interviewer. Wayne Clark, videographer. Uh, Mr. Weller, where were you born? Uh, March 9, 1926. Okay. In Elmira. In Elmira. <laughs> oh, all right. Did, did you grow up in Elmira? No, I grew up in Pennsylvania, just south of the border. Okay, whereabouts? Uh, well, the town, the nearest town would be Tawanda. Okay. But we live back in the country from there, so oh. Franklin Dale. But You're very rural. Very rural. Uh-huh. And did you go to school down there? I went to uh, high school in Tawanda. Okay, what was that like? Pretty small? Yeah. When we graduated, I think there was 69 of us. At that point, there were six of us who were in the service. Really? By the time we graduated. Oh, what year did you graduate? 1944. 1944. Now, uh, let's go back a little. Do you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Very well. It's very strange because I was sitting in the kitchen of our house, mm -hmm. which had a radio in it. I was listening to the radio, and I was working. I had a. I was working on a family history. Oh. And so I'd listen to what I'd type a while, and then I'd go and ask my grandfather and my father, you know, more about things. Mm -hmm. I'd come back out and type some more. And while I was out there, I heard about <laughs> Pearl Harbor. Mm. So that's that stuck with me. I've been doing genealogy ever since, really. Sure. But that always stuck with me. <laughs> sure. What uh, what went through your mind? Do you have a sense? Of no, no, nothing that I can remember. You yeah. know, it was just it was just a big blank. Okay. That I, that as far as I. So you're in you're in school at that point. Yeah, that would be forty one. So I was probably only a freshman, freshman probably. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what was your town like during the early part of the war? Any rationing or? Oh yeah, lots. Of, no rationing was uh, big in those days. Mm -hmm. You know, gasoline and mm -hmm. so I forgot. I think. Dad was home then. My father had been a foreman with the CCCs. Oh, really? And so, and he had been away at quite. Well, I was only 15, 20 miles away, but we had been away for a lot. But I, I think he was home by then, mm -hmm. by 40, I believe, mm -hmm. whenever the CCCs ended. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Now, um, in, when you were in high school, uh, the war was going on. Yeah. Um, did you know, when, when did you have a feeling you were going to enlist? Well, probably fairly early. Right. <laughs> I couldn't, uh, we, if the school agreed to, if you went through half of the senior year, they'd give you your diploma. Oh, really? So I think about the 16th of January, I enlisted. You enlisted? <laughs> and you enlisted in the Navy? Yeah. Why'd you pick the Navy? I don't know. I, I didn't like the, well, the, the Army you'd been hearing too much about, and so, don't ask me why, but I liked the Navy. <laughs> it seemed like a good idea at the yeah. time. <laughs> now, um, so you signed up, and yeah. about halfway through your high school, yeah. senior year, yeah. you, uh, you, you left for yeah. the service. Mm -hmm. where, did you, where did you go? Uh, I, I, I was sworn in in Buffalo. Okay. Uh, I enlisted in Elmira, but uh, you know I ended up in Buffalo uh, to be sworn in, mm -hmm. and then from there right to Samson. Directly to Samson. What yeah. time of the year were, did you arrive in Samson? January. January. <laughs> Tell us about Samson in January. It was cold. It was cold. <laughs> yeah, um, snowy. Yeah. And that sort of thing. The wind whipping across Seneca Lake. Yes, very much so. What were the what were the facilities like at Samson? Two-story wooden buildings, mm -hmm. uh, and they were they were very, as far as I was concerned, they were comfortable. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I came from the country, and they didn't you didn't ask for very much. In those That's days. true. That's true. <laughs> and they were quite they were quite adequate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was the basic training like there? You know, I don't remember that much. <laughs> it's funny. Of course, we marched every day, right. and we it was uh, you. Were, to movies every day and lectures and all this sort of stuff, mm -hmm. and well, I remember we had, were supposed to be able to take a rifle apart. I'm not certain I ever could. I know I could shoot because mm -hmm. I had uh, uh, 
even in Pennsylvania, you know, before that, before, when the war came on, I, I don't know what the group was called, but there used to, probably it was National Rifle Association or something, mm -hmm. and they used to have a, uh, we used to go and shoot in the garage, you know, that, uh, well, once a week. Mm -hmm. And so I know how, and I was brought up hunting too. Right, right. Uh, that, was, you know, didn't think anything about that. But then I remember the, of course, the gas, you had to go th into the gas uh, room mm -hmm. and out and take off your gas mask and that sort of stuff. Mm. And uh, I can't remember, I couldn't tell you much more. That's okay, that's okay. <laughs> was, uh, did it, now this was really your first time away from home? Yeah. What was that like? It didn't bother me. It didn't bother you, you were ready to get out of the... Yeah, yeah no, I probably was, <laughs> in all fairness. Um, I did, I've always thought that an awful lot of people who enlisted in World War I were ready to to leave home. You know? Yes, uh, were you? Or World War Two, I should say. Just before you got here, we interviewed a lady and uh, from upstate New York, and uh, she enlisted. Time to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Time to go. It was an adventure. Yeah. Um, good group of guys in basic training. Do you yeah. Remember? Yeah. Okay. No, uh, it was. As far as I remember, you know, yeah. there was no problem, no troubles there. It was, it was, they were good, good guys. Good. Now, uh, after uh, you, your time at Samson, where did you go? Um, we, we went on boot leave, but I think we only had a week of boot leave, mm -hmm. and we came right back, and at that point, Samson was over, we came back in the, in the end of March, or very, very early April, and Samson was loaded. You know, they bring back. They sent people on two weeks leave, one week leave, and they brought us all back together. Uh, and we were there wasn't any room in the outgoing OGUs, mm -hmm. so we ended up sleeping in the uh, drill halls, uh, this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we were all loaded and taken on the Le Lehigh Valley down to New York mm -hmm. to Pier 92. Uh, we were getting, we didn't realize what was going on, but the, the Navy was loading Europe for the invasion. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, where did you go from there? Uh, from Pier 92, I think we were there, may have been there about a week. I've been written down something. I'll have to well, we've got it. I'll send you no, some, more, some more. Okay, <laughs> that's wonderful. Because <laughs> I, I always remember the group that we ended up being selected out. Mm -hmm. was called Ugly 86. Ugly 86. Yeah. Now where did that name come from? I have no idea. No? That was a draft of the people, of the sailors that were headed for... Uh, they all of a sudden got us all together on... It wasn't... It may have been Easter Sunday. It may have been... It was Easter Sunday. And uh, marched us after a long, fussy time to uh, the Queen Mary. Oh. And loaded aboard the Queen Mary. And then we were headed for... So oh, what was a what was your ride in the Queen Mary like? Terrible. <laughs> really? <laughs> there was supposedly, from what I've read since then, uh, it was the biggest load of, of servicemen that the Queen Mary ever took over. There were over twenty four thousand. Wow. And there was about probably three thousand sailors. And <laughs> but we were the one that I was on was on E deck which is down a hell of a long ways. <laughs> it, we were so far in the front of the ship that we could see the steel on both sides. You know? <laughs> it was way below where they would have ever, you know, passengers or crew or anything right. would have been. It, with bunks, I swear, I think they were four, store, four high, but they may have only been three. You know, but I always remember them being up. So like you're three. pretty well packed in there. We were. Not know. very comfortable. What was the food like? Uh, they fed us twice a day. You had to go forever up and stand in line and this sort of stuff. And I don't have any idea what we ate. We ate and that was about it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And we, the, I was, the one thing I always remember there was that we, any time you went out of your compartment, you had you should take your helmet, mm -hmm. or not your helmet, but your helmet liner at least with you. <laughs> People were always getting sick. In this oh. way, your helmet liner was your bucket. 
And, but we did occasionally would go up and stand, uh, uh, you know, where mm -hmm. we could see the ocean and so forth. The only time, really the only time I was ever seasick was on the Queen Mary, but it was going up and down like, so each time you went up, you were ready to come up. <laughs> so you got seasick on probably the largest ship in the world. That's right. <laughs> But never after that. Well, I, I never was sick enough to heave. Right. I did that time. But, okay. Uh, okay. After that, I was a cook, and I used to get up in the morning and I'd be a little queasy. Mm -hmm. So I used to eat dry. It was always dry bread, you know, saving before. I used to eat dry bread, and that would okay. calm everything down. Now, uh, where, at what point were you trained as a cook? Uh, we got to. We got to England, we got to Scotland, and then we uh, took train down to up into Glas uh, to um, Wales, Cardiff, okay. and then it, then we got on the, a whole bunch of us got on the, that LST. I guess I think there were ten of us, but I'm not positive. Mm -hmm. And don't ask me why, but they decided I was going to be a cook striker. <laughs> no, oh, really? I, I hadn't done any picking, you know. <laughs> Navy just decided. You're yeah, in. I was interesting. Now, was this the ship you were going to be assigned to? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we were. Uh, we went went on to that ship, and uh, then the next day they told us what we were what we were doing. I was. I had taken a commercial course in high school, so I thought, well, maybe I'll get to be storekeeper, yeoman, this sort of thing. But mm -hmm. I turned out to be cook start. And you'd never had uh, any experience cooking? No. Well, at home, yes, a little bit, right. you know, but not, not even what boys think about cooking today, I don't think. So, uh, how did you learn to be a cook? Uh, working with another, with another cook. There would be two of us on the same watch together. Okay. Generally, two cooks and a baker on, on the same watch. You just, you just learned. Okay, uh, you hoped that he knew a little bit more than what... Anyway, he was a pretty good, uh, okay. uh, pretty good... He knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. and since then, I've heard from him that he hated it too. <laughs> I didn't hate it, but he said he didn't want to be a cook. He wanted to be a quartermaster or a radio man or something right. of this sort. But they ended up. And he was a cook first class at that point, so he'd been at it for quite a while. Okay. So, um, describe the LST. What was that like? <laughs> LSTs are like big wash boilers. <laughs> They're flat on the bottom. Mm -hmm. They're high on the sides, well, of course, with the uh, a bow door to them, mm -hmm. so we could, when it was, well, most of it's hollow, because the tank right. deck was mostly hollow. Uh, the quarters were along the sides and this sort of thing. Uh, what was the crew size, approximately? Uh, about 100. Uh, well, 108, 109, I think. I, we had, I think, seven officers. And, mm -hmm. uh, but then we would load, uh, well, when we got ready to get any invasion, we had on, I think about, I can't remember the number, but I swear there must have been 75 or 80 corpsmen and doctors and so forth. And uh, would be used as a hospital ship, mm -hmm. brings uh, people back. That's, uh, and then of course, then it was, more work for cooks. <laughs> How long did you train prior to the invasion? Oh, let's see. Uh, well, we caught, we picked up the ship in the middle of of April, sometime. Not very long. No, uh, we we really didn't do that much training. Was this the original crew to the ship? Uh, a lot of them were, and they had just come back from Africa. Oh, okay. The, 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 the ship had been in Africa and okay. Italy and so forth, and then they went to Ireland and got refitted. Okay. And, uh, they, d they got rid of a lot of crew. You know, a lot of them came back, mm -hmm. and then we were their replacements. Now, uh, what was the captain like? <clears throat> he was a good guy. Uh, that's all, about all I can say. Uh, very aloof in his own way. You know? mm -hmm. But both the, the captain and the executive officer had been, uh, had come up from the ranks before, 
They were both warrant officers. Oh, really? I think the captain was a warrant car carpenter. Uh, before the war, <laughs> and I can't remember what the exec was. The exec you got to know a little bit better. Uh -huh. uh, he was aloof too, but you got to know him better. Mm -hmm. The captain you did, but they were, you know, they had come up, so they knew what they, and they knew what they were doing. You know? Well, they were pretty good officers. Yeah, crew yeah. was pretty good crew. Yeah, no, I I, I liked the crew. Okay. Yeah. So you let's see, you, you trained from about April till. Yeah, we didn't do much training that I can remember. Mm -hmm. You know, we did ferry stuff a little bit around because we went over at well, and yes, we did do a little bit in, in Wales, but not much. And then we went down to southern England, Falmouth, mm -hmm. Plymouth, along there. How seaworthy is an LST? Well, I think they're quite. They seem to be quite seaworthy. Lord knows the one that. Came back from Greece just. Yeah, last, isn't that amazing? That's, that's what got me sort of interested. In fact, you know, you forget about things and then all of a sudden right. go back on all that again. Personally, I thought those guys were crazy. But <laughs> they were. But <laughs> well, I guess they have to be to be in an LSD a little bit. Yeah. Um, it was, they, they, were, they were bumpy. <laughs> you know, anytime you'd get, uh, you'd get a wave underneath, then it would come, if it did, wasn't. Heavily loaded, then we could down, slap, really? <laughs> and then and then roll, <laughs> slap, and then roll because they were. I say they wash, but a wash boiler is the closest thing I can think of. Now, what did LST stand for? Landing ship tank. As opposed to the other saying, large, slow target. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's what I heard. Yes. <laughs> now. Um, what did you do to prepare for the invasion? Uh, did, did you have a sense that it was coming? Oh, we knew it was coming. Okay. It wasn't any question, but it was just because uh, there were so many ships, and we all knew that you know it was it was in the works, but nobody had any idea when. Now, um, what were you what were you transporting over? Oh, the first time. The first time. Yeah, the first time we had a third of General Bradley's staff. Oh, really? Yeah. There were three LSTs that had his staff, and, and we were one of them. Oh. So we set out for one day. Okay. And didn't go in that first day, so we were lucky in a way, you know. Now, as you're sitting out there on D Day, uh, what, what did you see in here? Airplanes, <laughs> mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was, and, and ships as far as you could see. Did you see the coast? No. You were too no, far No, we were out, out beyond that. We uh, we were in safe range, I think. Okay. For, you know, big guns or something. Yeah, with Bradley's staff on, they want to. Yeah, they wanted to. What were those guys like? I don't remember a thing about them. That's right. No. And uh, so you went in on after. Probably in the second day. It may have been the third, but I okay. think it was the second. Yeah. What were your impressions as you came in? Thinking about it now, I don't remember any. Mm -hmm. Just just the uh, the cliff in front of us. Uh, mm -hmm. We went in on Omaha. Uh, we went into Omaha, Beach, Omaha Beach, and that had the, the mm -hmm. high cliffs there. And there were still uh, I don't remember the first day, but there were still uh, the German 88s were still, you know, hitting here and there, uh, and and of course occasionally a German plane. Not often, but occasionally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you get to see any German planes? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure they attracted attention. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> yeah. um, so you landed on Omaha Beach with, yeah. the, with Bradley's staff. You unloaded? Yeah. Uh, then, I, as, as I remember, we sat there a day. Or we, we, we got off. Mm -hmm. You know, France has a, a, a big tide. So an LST, when it went in, we went in on high tide. Right. And then we sat there, literally, for at least another six hours until the tide came back in again. Oh, okay. Because you, you were, and you were a sitting duck mm -hmm. as the body were there. So what was going through your, you have a, you don't remember. No. That's okay. Just, you know, just one of those things. Hmm. Then we went to Omaha. That was Saturday night, I think, and we, uh, 
can't remember what we picked up that first time. I think we picked up wounded mm -hmm. and, uh, the first time and brought them and brought them back. But we were on Omaha for five, six hours probably. Mm -hmm. And I remember going ashore there. I still got a seashell I picked up. Really? <laughs> I collect. <laughs> right. The, um, so, um, the 88s were coming over then. Really? Uh, uh, yes. One of that, I always remember that Saturday night, because here, here, boom, you know, nothing we could do. We, could just, we were just sitting ducks. Mm -hmm. and I, I've since talked to others that were on the same beach, <laughs> remembering that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was a scary... Uh, yeah. I don't know why you don't think about it being scary, but it was. Right. Not, but not looking at it, back at it. Mm -hmm. And um, after your first trip, uh, then um, we'd go back and bring in. I think after the first one, we were bringing trucks and, and that sort of thing over a couple mm -hmm. of at least two or three times. And we took back German prisoners twice. I know. Have any impressions of those guys? Uh, yeah, we, <laughs> the LST had a window in the front. They, I think it was to control the bow doors and so forth. And it was up, maybe it's not quite as high as his ceiling off mm -hmm. the deck. And the uh, all of the prison, and there was quite a lot of them. There may have been four or five hundred. Mm -hmm. That uh, and they <laughs> they'd come and trade with us at the window, you know. <laughs> so I had some German money, a few little German coins. I used to have German belt, belt buckle, you know. They'd trade mm -hmm. us for candy and oh. things like that. <laughs> oh, interesting. They uh, didn't bother you at all? No. They were, they looked like people as far, you know, at that point, that's mm -hmm. all you could say. Mm -hmm. Fairly heavily guarded? No, not yeah. particularly. There, there were, I'm sure there was MPs there, but I don't remember them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there were. Now, where did they, where did you transfer them to? I don't even remember. Uh, seems to me we were at that point we were going into not Plymouth. It may have been Southampton and it might have been uh, Portland Weymouth. I'm not sure where we took them to. Yeah. It, uh, you know. All right. So uh, you, you thought you did this a couple of times? We, I know we did it twice, okay. yeah. And we brought back mail ones, you know, th that sort of thing. And then uh, our ship had been had had railroad tracks laid down in it uh, in the uh, in the tank deck. Uh, we had railroad tracks. So then, about the, just after maybe a week, two weeks, then we began taking railroad cars. To oh, really? Yeah. But there we took them to Sherburg, and they were unloaded. Uh, what was Sherburg like uh, at that point? Don't remember much about it. Okay. I never got beyond. I think I got on shore there once, but just to say I was on shore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the LST was uh, working pretty hard. Oh yeah, doing yeah. quite a few runs back. Yeah, oh we continuously. Okay. Yeah. Any shore leave? Uh, any? No, not at all there. No. Mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe in one. Well, we might have a night wherever we were. Just, but that would be just. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember. I can't remember where we were. I used to know Falmouth. I okay. I, I can remember going to church in Falmouth, and two old ladies picked me up and took me home for tea, <laughs> and only they insisted I wanted coffee. <laughs> you know, it's. No, it's, Americans wanted of coffee. They didn't do. want tea, so their coffee came out of a. Uh, a liquid uh, bottle, you know, to make coffee. <laughs> I always remember that. <laughs> Were the English pretty nice to you? Yeah, yeah. I didn't have that much contact, but I re just remember those two particularly. They took me home. Well, her husband wasn't with her. Mm -hmm. uh, probably a, well, his wife and his or sister or something. They told me what you know had been happening. And mm -hmm. like that. So what was the coffee like? Bad. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm sure you just politely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you went along with it. <laughs> now, at um, it, it, it one point, you began to transfer transfer uh, wounded. 
Uh, we, we brought wounded back. At okay. least, I, I, we may have only done it once, mm -hmm. but I, I think we did it twice. Mm -hmm. And then I think that whole, uh, the uh, medical team left our ship, uh, as I remember. Mm -hmm. And then we began taking, we took, we did take soldiers over, but they may have been with the trucks and, and tanks and mm -hmm. so forth too. I'm not positive about that. I know there'd be a bunch of them. Right. It always meant, you know, instead of cooking for a hundred, you meant you were cooking for two hundred. Wow. <laughs> and uh, did you know that? Uh, did you have pretty good notice on that, or sometimes pretty short notice? Fairly short notice. Okay. You sort of were expecting it right along, I think. Mm -hmm. you know. um, were, the sh were you fairly well supplied? Yeah. You know, I, we may, I can't remember. Picking up, I'm sure we picked up supplies along the way each time we went in, but I don't remember it. Mm -hmm. Any uh, any of the trips uh, stand out? No, except the one uh, the we were tied up in Sherbert uh, one night after we we'd taken railroad cars off, and that night our ship settled onto a mine, which must have been laying in the bottom of the harbor. And as the tide went out, we just, that's when we came. Uh, it blew up one side of the ship. Oh dear. Yeah. And we, it seems to me we stayed there. We picked up our stuff. Sailors travel light, you can get everything into your mattress, your sea bag, and you're ready to go. <laughs> and uh, then they loaded us onto a tug. I remember sleeping on the tug one night mm -hmm. on the deck. And uh, it was, and then took us back to Plymouth. Uh, and the ship was in Plymouth for, that was, that was in August. What was, uh, what was your LST number? 391. 391? Yeah. Okay, and uh, it settled on the mine, and yeah. it was recovered and? Yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, well it was towed back. Okay. To, to England, yeah. It, uh, there weren't any bad uh, casualties. Yes. I think there were three Purple Hearts out there. But the skipper always said, I think he jumped out of bed and a glass had fallen off and broken and he cut his foot, so he ended up going to the, had to go to the medics. Well, that was a Purple Heart. You know? <laughs> but I think there wasn't any serious injuries. Oh, well, that's good. Except the ship. And uh, while the ship was being repaired, what? Uh... Uh, um, I stayed on the ship. Oh, you did? Uh, I was uh, in a skeleton crew that was left on. Uh, most of the crew were taken off to a base and uh, then broken up and sent off to other ships oh. pretty quick. I stayed on the ship uh, and then at one point I was transferred to our flotilla headquarters in Portland, Weymouth. I was there, I don't know, a month or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, uh, then I, they called me back to the ship when we were getting ready to come back to the States. Oh, okay. Uh, then we were in the Plymouth uh, dockyards mm -hmm. for all that time. Hmm. And then in, uh, let's see, in early December, uh, the ship was ready, they were ready to bring her back. Mm -hmm. They were going to tow her back. Uh, so then I went back on a skeleton crew. There was about, well, I think there were 30 of us. I have to, I, I can find it, but there were, and I think there were four officers. Mm -hmm. And so we, we were the crew to come back. And then they towed us back from uh, Plymouth, well, to Norfolk. All right, so you crossed the Atlantic on uh the LST. By tow. By being Under tow. Towed, yeah. That must have been a joy. Yeah, that one is uh, the uh, piece that I gave you is, is my story. <laughs> is my story about, no? Mm -hmm. The one that came out of the LST news. Oh, okay. Now that's my story about coming back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's in fairly good detail. <laughs> Goofy, I wrote it back, way back in 1945, but I didn't discover it until just... <laughs> so what was the trip, what were your impressions of the trip coming back? It was rough, right. for the first part of it, yeah. Because uh, it was December, mm -hmm. English 
uh, butters are bad enough, uh, you know, at that time right. of year. And then we were being towed, which, well, in an LST, as I said, they have to, they tend to slap. Right. Well, when you have, when you're being towed, all of a sudden your cable tightens up, and then you go slap, and it really just sh shook the daylights. And then it would, of course, then it would rock after it, it, it slapped and so forth. And we did well as we were leaving the harbor. The uh, <laughs> chief on the next ship said to our chief, "Well, I'll see you back in, in the states." And, or she, Archie said, and the other one said, if we ever get there. <laughs> they didn't hold out much hope. We had a storm, <laughs> I don't know how many, maybe five days out, and it was rough. It was awful rough. <laughs> and we were rolling around in this, you know, being towed and slapped and so mm -hmm. forth. And finally the ship next to us, uh, well, the, uh, I can't remember what we called him now, but the head of the flotilla, uh, <laughs> called our our ship and said how many uh, how many men are there on your ship and so forth <laughs> and how many should we look for to pick up and he said told him and he said but don't be so damned optimistic <laughs> well, gallows humor yeah, sort of yeah mm. and the, that was rough mm. and then um, <laughs> uh, I, I I wrote about that because. We were, that night, everything, I pinned everything up where I knew where it was and so forth, um, by the bunk, but all of a sudden it slapped and we said, uh-oh, as if someone yelled, that's it guys, let's go. So we got halfway upstairs and then we feel foolish about the whole thing, but I don't think we slept with her. Took, didn't take your clothes off for a couple of nights. Oh dear. <laughs> um, now you're towed by what? Uh, a seagoing oh, sea tug. Yeah, it was a, what they call a lame duck convoy. All of us were being towed. There probably were 15 ships. Oh, really? Maybe, maybe three or four, uh, maybe, uh, maybe more than the LSTs. I don't remember the, uh, what the other ones were that were being towed. Well, how long uh, did it take you to cross? 30 some days, I think. Really? Yeah. We, uh, because it was, Lame duck, they were, they were slow. It was only tug, you know, as fast as the tug. And then, let's see, where? Well, about four days, well, not four days, after that bad storm, we knew, we had heard that there was a, well, let's see, they said a snake in the area, a, a German U boat. So, but we didn't have to worry about rough seas, you know, because they, they weren't any, besides right. LSTs are pretty low, are pretty high in the water. Right. And they generally don't. They used to say they you couldn't get them, but they could. And the next morning, after the storm finished, we, uh, well, it gets a longer story. The way we, as long as we've been out between England and the United States, there was six hours difference in time. Mm -hmm. So we had to change an hour every so often. You know, at night we changed. So, but this time they'd forgotten because of the storm and so forth. So our skipper all of us ups and decides you'll take the two hours off that day. Well, I was up, ready, <laughs> got my potatoes and <laughs> got ready for lunch and came back down and found it wasn't it wasn't nine o'clock, it was seven o'clock. So, <laughs> and that same day, I always remember the 21st of December, the longest day in, yeah, the longest day in the year. And <laughs> it was 20, the shortest day in the year. It was 26 hours for us. So. But that same day, then the ship next to us uh, got hit with a, a German torpedo. Oh, really? And someone came in and says, well, uh, as I remember, it's a 385. Someone has since told me it was a 386, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I think it's still the 385. And so, but the convoy just had to go right on, and then the destroyer escort went back to see about the ship and try to get the sub. And the story goes, right or wrong, that they dropped a depth charge and took their own uh, fantail off, you know, the, the, as they were disabled. 
somehow but we had to leave them and they were they were towed into some port I don't know where the destroyer escort uh, yeah the destroyer escort sunk the, the LST uh, uh, after you know when they okay cleaned it up uh, cleaned the people out so I, I met a guy I knew the guy that I worked with who was on it who oh, really? was an officer on it yeah hmm. so after 30 days uh, you, you finally made Norfolk Norfolk. <laughs> I'm sure that was a, uh, a pleasant sight. <laughs> we didn't see it until we got there, practically. It was nothing but fog. It wasn't anything to see coming into Norfolk. Mm -hmm. Then, let's see, in, uh, but then they sent us all home for, you know, a month leave. Oh. Uh, the whole, the whole crew. And then when we came back, our ship was in little, uh, Little Creek, which is the amphibious base there, and we been it had been refitted and a new crew mm -hmm. except for the old ones, and then we were training amphibious groups, and we used to go up to Quantico and take on Marines and come back down. It was it was that was heavy work, mm -hmm. as we I forgot we were working. There's a name for it. Four on and three off, or three on and four off. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. We were working twelve-hour days, you know, mm -hmm. uh, all three shift or all three meals, and then you get three or four days off. Mm. So you were working pretty hard. Yeah, we were there, but we also had the, the other days to right. recreate. <laughs> what was it like going home after you'd been away for quite a while? Huh. I don't know. I don't remember that much mm -hmm. about it. Uh, I remember going home, signing up for the draft. <laughs> After you'd been in? Yeah, you had to sign up for the draft. <laughs> and then I signed up for my unemployment. At, what was it? 25, 20, I can't remember, 5220 Club, they used to call mm -hmm. it. And, uh, I think I got one payment out of them, then I went to work. <laughs> now, um, when you were in Norfolk, you were um, doing the amphibious training, was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how long were you doing that for? Well, I was only on it till, uh, let's see, from April. Probably. <laughs> Look, we're going to just change tapes one more. Uh, said, does this refresh your memory? <laughs> right, right. Um, so after, uh, how long were you doing the training at? Uh... Uh, um, it's, let's see, we, got, we must have got back about the middle of, we came back in January, so probably 1st of March till middle of June. Then I went to the hospital in Portsmouth, and uh, so it, those, those months that we were mm -hmm. training. How yeah. long were you in the hospital? Until mm, he got discharged, uh, which was a long time. It should have been uh, within a couple of months, but I was there three months, I think, because I lost my pay records. So there I sat. Finally went to borrow money from the chaplain, and he said, "Why? Have you, what, what's happened? And then he, was, he bugged him, <laughs> and then I was discharged. So you had enough points? No, probably didn't. No. Okay. No. No. I. Uh, they had me down for disabled. Okay. Which I still am, supposedly. Mm -hmm. I still get ten percent. Huh. Um. What happened to the LST after the war? It's. It's very interesting because I never was quite certain, but since. Uh, since that story came out. I've got. I've had been in contact with three or four other men who were on the same ship, mm -hmm. and it went up. It went from Norfolk up the Mississippi to Cincinnati, and I'm pretty sure that was for Navy Day, 1945. Yeah, because this would have all taken place in 45. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and in, it was up there in 45. Uh, then another guy says, we brought it back and we went around to San Francisco 
and we were in San Francisco as a repair ship hmm. for a while. Then it came back to, to Norfolk again and was put in mothballs. Hmm. And the story goes, after that, it was in the uh, up in the Arctic when they were building. Uh, uh, they were building a, a communication network up there someplace. Now, mm -hmm. that's that I haven't found anyone who knows anything about it. And then minute after that, it ended up in Greece. Uh, when they went to get the ships for the, the people that brought this one back from Greece, the 391 was supposed to be the ship they went, they were going to bring back. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then... But when they got there, they discovered it was in pretty bad shape, and the other one was in better shape. So they brought that one back. Oh, so yeah. it's still over in Greece? Apparently, yeah. Oh. Now, this was this is the first I'd heard of it in Greece. I didn't know of anything about it from the time I left it mm -hmm. until until I saw in the, uh, well on the net that it was in Greece. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, have you been to any reunions? No, no none at all, and I've. I should have gone this year because they were there in Mobile, uh, and it's, um, it's just over now. Mm -hmm. Lord knows what happened, you know, how they got there and so forth, because mm -hmm. I think it was the 14th of September. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I will. Well, that's, good. <laughs> that's good. Now, uh, you got home. Yeah. And um, what did you do? I went to work as a cook. <laughs> went to work as a cook? You must have gotten pretty good at it. <laughs> I uh, we went to uh, uh, the local hotel, mm -hmm. and I was the bar cook. I was, you know, dinner cook, and, and then bar cook for the rest of the night. And then I had, oh, I worked in, I was cooking in another hotel. Then I went to a summer resort, worked as pantry boy and so forth. Then I went to college that year. Oh, so, good. Uh, yeah. Where'd you go to college? Uh, I went to Mansfield, mm -hmm. which is in... Pennsylvania, right. just right near Elmer, right. just south of Elmira. I was headed for Penn State as a in the hotel administration, but that year, like you were talking about, Penn State sent all the freshmen out to the uh, teachers' colleges. Was, uh, there just wasn't room for it. Mm -hmm. But then went to Slippery Rock. Uh -huh. Well, there were 400. I think there were 400 uh, veterans. Really? that came into this college. There were two guys that hadn't been in the service <laughs> in the whole school. <laughs> they were both probably 17. <laughs> so you took advantage of the GI Bill? Yeah. Oh, well, yes. Yeah, yeah. And you completed the... Nope. Uh, well, I, I got to... Uh, I was in Mansfield and I decided, well, maybe I'd be a teacher. You know, that was a teacher's college mm -hmm. and it was the big thing and so forth. So then I decided to change. But I finished, yes, I, I graduated from Mansfield. Mm -hmm. Then I went on to decide, no, I'm going to be an Episcopal priest, so I went to the seminary for one year. Mm -hmm. Then I settled in New York City and lived there most of my adult life. <laughs> As a? I worked for SNH Green Stamps oh. for 31 years. Well, there's a name from the past. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> well, I haven't heard that uh, <laughs> in, in ages. You see it once in a great while. There's, there's one rest stop on the throughway that gives us an edge green stand. There's still oh, really? Yeah. yeah there's, there, there's just a tiny, small office in New York. Mm -hmm. At one point, we used to have 800 people, and I think they're down to less than 40 now. But they, they still put out a little catalog. Really? So did you retire from uh, Yeah. Oh, OK. That's interesting. Hmm. So how, how would you summarize your uh, your experience in the military? It was good. Mm -hmm. No, it was good for me, and uh, I liked it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I might have, you know, if I could have, I might have stayed in. <laughs> I don't know, you know, right. how you say that. So uh, are you still in contact with anybody? Uh? No, not anymore. Uh, I, I did use to, I used to keep in contact with some, not from the ship particularly, mm -hmm. but along the way that I had. But no, I'm, I'm not any except for the few I, I'm now in contact with on the on the net. Mm -hmm. you know. Now you say you went back to Samson. Yeah, 
And my sister and I drove up one day. It was, it was quite fun. Mm -hmm. So the only thing left is the, the brick? Yep. That was brick. So they didn't tear it down. And it's, you wouldn't believe it, you know, because now it's nothing but pine trees, practically. Apparently there was Air Force had a base there. Right. Well, uh, it was the Navy. It became the college. And after the college, uh -huh. it became Air Force. Uh -huh. Any any other stories, reminiscences? <laughs> Let's see. Um, no, not particularly. Oh, we, we might. We when we were coming back. All of a sudden, we uh, well. There were little things that happened there mm -hmm. with the tug. Yet. I can't remember the names we called it. We, I know, I remember our ship with Elmer, but I can't remember what the tug's name was, that is, with the codes that they right. were using. But whatever the other ship was, he used to, all of a sudden, he was always lagging behind, so they were, they were you know, come on, come on, pep it up a little bit. And then, uh, well, we, <laughs> we always, being a Navy ship, we were, and we were behind him, we used to say it was because of the beer cans that were coming over the side. You know, because I'd swear it was, you know, continuous that, that they were throwing over beer cans. But the day after that um, incident I spoke about, where the other ship got hit, uh, uh, Timothy, that was one of them. Timothy took off, and, and finally the, uh, the um, guy in charge of the flotilla, he said, Timothy, will you please come back? The DEs want to be the one who do the do the screening. So uh, he got a little religion after the, uh, <laughs> the attack. Yeah, and we, we dragged it on, and, just, and then we, we were really taking off nice, and the weather was good, and so forth, and all of a sudden, down near the Azores, we had to pick up another ship uh, that was joining our <laughs> hotel that comes back, and it was an old, ah, names, names, ah, the big old uh, cargo ships from the war. Liberty ship? Liberty ship. And it was disabled, the tug was too small for it, and we were going six, eight knots an hour, you know, and then we were down to four, so we dragged along with this for days when we should have been going. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And it's little things like that you, mm -hmm. you think of just once in a while. Now, the tugs, were they civilian tugs? Yeah. Oh, they were. They were so they're contracted. Yeah. I can't oh. think uh, and did, I can't remember what they were what their no, name was, but it, mm -hmm. they were civilian tugs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? No, we were a long time in Plymouth, of course, so I got to know the city relatively well. Mm -hmm. And we used to, well, we were no buses late, so you ended up walking from Plymouth to the back to Devon, more top yards and so forth. And that was, the city had been hit incredibly hard you mm -hmm. know, early in the war. Just, well, I keep, th I thought of it last week with the World Trade Center. Right. Because only it was not just one building, it was the whole city that was down. And London, too. Mm -hmm. I got to leave in London. Uh, for five days, so and that was the same. Thing. Really, yeah. that, that left that impression upon you. Yeah, it? oh yeah, interesting. Yeah. Well, Mr. Weller, we appreciate you coming in. It, uh, You're more than welcome. It was a very nice interview, and uh, we got a perspective that we don't ordinarily get. Good. <laughs> There's so many. Everyone has a absolutely. Everyone has a different idea. It's all just a uh, little. And part know. of the big puzzle. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we're going to put those in the library and you'll be forever <laughs> memorialized in our library. Oh, great. <laughs> well, thank